Um, I've always felt there's, there's no universal panacea for any disorder, but if there was one, it would be light. <laughs>
getting access to natural light. I mean, there is an easy way, just spend three, four hours a day outdoors from well, morning. You to know, what <laughs> I looked at is what people do as soon as they wake up. Mm -hmm. As soon as they wake up, phone. they check their messages on their phone, so they expose themselves to blue light right. as soon as. Yeah. Then they do the same thing at night before they go to bed. Right. So actually they're disrupting their circadian rhythms. And what I discovered accidentally, but then I came across this research, that if instead of checking your phone, first thing you do when you wake up is you go outside or even open the window mm -hmm. and expose yourself to light. And then at night before sunset, if you go outside and expose yourself to the, the you know, dimming sun, right. it resets your biological rhythms. But what you're saying, this can be done automatically. Exactly. So the whole concept was nobody has time to go spend three, four hours a day outdoors. Evening can help from a circadian perspective, yeah. but people don't do that. So what research that, that Robert and the team have been doing for almost 18 years now, we have worked with Harvard University. They actually did a study and they published the results. We can get into that. You know, Cincinnati Children's Hospital, their NICU, you know, they did the research. They were blown away with the effect that it had. And so the, the idea here is that can you bring outdoor light in its most natural form indoors? And it's really hard to do that. You can't do it in any lighting fixture. And you needed a shape like that because we are showing that color dispersion that happens you know, in the sky. It's not just the sunlight, it's actually sunlight and the sky together, what our eye sees. And that's what that product is. You know, it has won many design awards because it's also aesthetically very pretty, especially when it goes through all the different phases. Yeah, so I started off my career um, at NASA to help the astronauts who are on space station set their circadian rhythms, and they orbit the Earth every 90 minutes. They see a sunrise every 90 minutes. And so um, our biology doesn't know how to handle that kind of information. Um, so we created a lighting system to create a 24-hour cycle. And using the new biology and the new science that we, we were um, understanding at the time, to pinpoint the receptors that drive our circadian rhythm. So we were able to create a 24-hour cycle on space station. And so that was um, 14 years ago we started that. And I've been ever since kind of working on figuring out how to do the same thing that we have there here on Earth because, you know, they see a sunrise every 90 minutes, but we're stuck inside every, you know, 90% of our lives. So how do we do something that's meaningful within that? Um, so we kind of looked at it from, from everything that, you know, is, is important from what's going outside. So it gives you your personal sunrise, um, which is going through right now. So you can kind of see the sky glow first and the sun kind of elevates up with that nice red glow that we expect. A really nice way to wake up in the morning um, helps with your cortisol awakening response. So you get up feeling refreshed and ready to go. Goes into the daytime, which is right here. You spend the most of your time um, with that setting. And then at the end of the day, the sunset kind of helps you wind down. And it's all gearing at these specific photoreceptors in our, in our eyes that are projecting to all these different regions of the brain. So it's not just what we see, but it's going to other regions of the brain um, that are affecting our mood, our vigilance, our alertness, um, and our circadian rhythms, which is going to set us up for, for better sleep. So we just try to make this an, a personalized solution. And so you could set it up if you have a certain lifestyle and Deepak might have a different lifestyle and I might have a different lifestyle. I have young kids. I might have to do some things that are different. So it could be individualized to each and every one of us. And that's kind of the essence. <laughs> I'm just totally fascinated by the fact that all life on our planet ultimately is light and photosynthesis. Right. And it's quantum mechanical. That's one of the things that we now know for sure, that uh, photosynthesis right. is quantum mechanical. Okay, that it obeys the laws of entanglement, which means total correlation. And, you know, I've been looking up on all these AI platforms right now, um, like ChatGPT and Bing, and now there's something called... Uh, Google Bard, 
and you know, I ask, is our biolog biological apparatus, is the biological organism, not just of the human species, but all species, at a fundamental level, it has to be quantum entangled. It has to be. Otherwise, how does a human body think thoughts, play a piano, kill germs, remove toxins, make a baby all at the same time? <laughs> it's a yeah. correlated activity while it's tracking the movement of stars and planets as its own biological rhythms. So not only is light the basis of all life on this planet, but every biological organism, not just humans, is regulated by these cosmic rhythms and we are actually dancing to these rhythms even though we can't hear the tune. Our biology is entangled and every species has its own bioreceptors for how it metabolizes light. Well, a bat uh, at night uh, or an owl at night mm -hmm. has a completely different Right. biological response, but yet maintains its circadian rhythms because its receptors, both to visible and invisible light, right. Right. are perfectly tuned in to the cosmic symphony. We are the only species, by the way, who doesn't do this. And you know, and now not only are we getting depressed, but our pets, our dogs and right. cats are getting depressed because <laughs> we have domesticated the them and we give them That's this right. artificial blue light. Yes, absolutely. So I think light metabolism is something that needs to go much further than even how it influences, for example, the hormones leptin and ghrelin, right. which are responsible for metabolism, appetite, yeah. Yeah. weight control, which in turn are entangled with cortisol and adrenaline, right. yeah. which in turn are caught, uh, entangled with uh, things like serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. It's right. one system. Yeah. We try and divide it, and the solution actually is, seems to be very simple. Right. You just replicate what nature was doing. Exactly. And it is very hard to do that. <laughs> it took I so think much. <laughs> ever since Thomas Edison gave us the light bulb, right. we've seen increase in chronic illness, right. increase in inflammation, increase. Light affects the microbiome, ultimately, through mm -hmm. various neural pathways. So, you know, yeah. even the health of the microbiome. This area needs to be studied yes. and mathematically understood yes. in um, terms of quantum entanglement, yeah. quantum yeah. metabolism. Because this is, this is at a quantum level. And ultimately, everything, everything in the universe is entangled. Yeah, yeah that's pretty, pretty amazing the way you summarize that. You know, in terms of the research, Deepak, in the last 15 years alone, 360,000 publications have been put out there on light and its effect on human health. Uh, Robert, you should talk about that publication that, that actually showed the chart, right, from the baby, even before it's born, to us, you know, reaching our end, how at each phase light has shown or lack thereof affecting our health. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, um, we've done some work with NICU, Cincinnati Children's Hospital specifically, you know, looking at how light can affect development at that early stage and that may be the difference between, you know, survival and not. Um, so we're looking at specific wavelengths, again, talking to what you're speaking about is keeping the rhythm of what they were getting before um, while they're in utero. So looking at that sort of thing and the longevity, so I think that what we've seen is interesting is that, as you kind of mentioned, we get very complicated as we get older. But when you are, have a premature baby, they don't know any better and, and, and you see very dramatic effects of the lighting environment that provided. And on the other end, as we get older, we see the same thing, that it affects the, you know, their daytime behavior, their nighttime wandering, all the things that, that become very basic as you become older. And then of course, us as we get you know, very complicated and, and light is just an afterthought, um, we just neglect it. And so I think that this is the problem that we've had is that we've, we've kind of, not I wouldn't say neglected light, but we have um, really not given it its just due. It's, um, it's more valuable than what we give it credit for. You think light probably 
epigenetically modifies uh, gene activity, Absolutely. gene expression. In fact, one of the publications in the book talks about 43% of genetic expression is directly tied to light. I believe that because light is the basis of life, right? right? Absolutely. 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 Yeah, the Ewan talked about if you only focused on the protein coding genes, ninety hmm. percent of those are either you know disturbed or doing right just because of the light. So light does play it, as you say, at, at a molecular so level. So sleep wake cycles, appetite, digestive processes, right. sensory processing, perceptual activity, hmm. moods and right. emotions yes. are all one phenomenon. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that UK study, what shocked me is they actually accounted for age, sex, uh, profession, all of that. If you took all those variables out, and if you made only the light, the daytime light, if you gave those people more daytime light, the odds of them having major depressive disorders goes down by 20%. Just that one thing during the day. And probably affects inflammation, microbiome, yep. neuropeptides, yes. yep. immunomodulators, <laughs> all of that. Right? That's right. So yeah. how is this programmed right now to, to the outside? Uh, it's right? through an app, and the app gives you has the local information, so the local um, sunrise, sunsets, and it basically can work automatically. I think the solution, it's a solution for even weight problems, because weight problems are linked to disruptive hormonal cycles, mm -hmm. ghrelin, leptin, mm -hmm. and uh, light is directly connected to not only what we call melatonin, mm -hmm. melatonin, of course, the principal hormone identified, but these hormones are correlated with all the others, including Absolutely. the immunomodulators that regulate our moods and appetite and metabolism. So light therapy could be the solution to overweight, type two diabetes, things like that. Because until now there's nothing. Right. You know, recently there's been a spate of publications on Ozempic and all these, and now we're seeing right. that the people are committing suicide, dying right. from suicide as a result of that. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, that's why I'm, I'm a big believer that the best solution usually is the most simple and as natural as it's going to get. Like the, the meditation, the breathing exercise that you teach. I, I do yeah. that when I get tense. Yeah. It, it immediately... <laughs> well, this has been a very interesting con yeah. conversation. Let me see how we can actually expand this, yes. both on a scientific level Let's, let's explore this okay. all the way. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate thank it. You. Very excited yeah. uh, that we you. could, we could spend you. some time. Yeah, and I know you just came back from India. You must be exhausted. I'm fine, yeah. actually. I'm using the light. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>